We're going to continue our quest here with the section F4 to identify properties of median lines and altitudes of triangles. We've already talked about circumcenters and in centers. Those are the points of concurrency when you have uh, uh, perpendicular bisectors will form a circumcenter where you could draw a circle around a triangle. An in center would be the angle bisectors where that point of concurrency would be the center of the circle that would, ins that would inscribe a circle inside a triangle. Now let's go look at one called uh, a median line. So we, a median is a segment whose endpoints are a vertex and the midpoint of the opposite side. So in this picture, you can see that the segment goes from an endpoint, and then that's the midpoint of the opposite side, because those are the congruent signs. And we have all three of those here, so point C is what they call the point of concurrency of the median lines, and that's called a centroid, which we'll get to at the bottom of the page here. So that's a centroid. And another property of uh, median lines is if you look here, this segment is a little bit longer than this segment. Well, it's actually two-thirds the length of the entire segment. So the medians of a triangle are concurrent at a point that is two-thirds the distance from each vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. That seems a little strange. So let's take a look again. So DC... So this smaller segment here is two-thirds the entire length. I kind of like to think of it as there's this length, and then there's two of those lengths here. So it's kind of like a third in different thirds. So this length is a third, there's a third, and there's another third. So there's kind of like another dot right there. And the same thing will be true for EC. EC is from here to here. That's two-thirds the length of the whole thing, or two of these will equal that one, or two of those would equal that one. And the same is true for FC. Uh, the other concept is the altitude. The altitude of a triangle, as you know, is a, the perpendicular distance from one side to the vertex of the opposite side. Perpendicular segment from a vertex of the triangle to the line containing the opposite side. The altitude can be inside, outside, or on the triangle. And so here's a situation where we have three different triangles. The Altitude would be this length right here. It goes from a vertex straight down perpendicular to the opposite side. That altitude is inside the triangle. Here's a right triangle, in which case one of the sides is actually the altitude. And in an obtuse triangle, the altitude is actually from is outside. So if we went to this vertex and we went perpendicular to this side, we'd have to extend that side, and we'd have that line outside of the triangle. That one's kind of a strange one. But anyway, that, the point of concurrency of those would be those points there, there, and there, and those are called the orthocenter. Uh, and those, that really doesn't have any properties per se. It's just a matter of using the altitudes to find that point of concurrency. So in, in the end here, let's take a look at all four different segments. So we have the perpendicular bisectors, which create the circumcenter. So that's created by finding the, the, uh, the perpendicular bisectors of each of the sides of the triangle. That creates a circumcenter, which is going to draw a circle outside the triangle. We have the angle bisector point of concurrency called the in-center, which is equidistant from the sides of the triangle. So that would be a circle inside the triangle. We have a centroid, which is the point of concurrency of the medians of a triangle. And it, uh, it is actually the balancing point of the triangle. If you tried to balance that on a pencil, you could do it there. Uh, but the distance from the short distance is one-third. This is two-thirds to create the whole thing. And that's going to be true throughout. And then the orthocenter would be where the three altitudes uh, uh, will intersect. It doesn't really have any properties for us, but that's just the point of concurrency is called the orthocenter. So that's a look at our notes for section F4. Let's take a look at a couple of examples here. So our first example is what is the length of XB? So we have to identify these sides first of all. And since they're going from a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side, these are median lines. So right off the bat, we can say that's the centroid. Okay, so remember, this is two-thirds the length of the entire side. So we're looking for uh, XB. We know that XA, so XA is 8. What's XB? Well, here's the way I kind of like to think of it. I like to take this segment or any of the segments, and let me kind of redraw it here. 
and let's just sort of pretend this is our centroid. And so if I draw and I put another line there, it looks like we have one, two, three segments. Well, since this segment is eight, this is four, this is four, and that'll be four. That's the way I like to do it. I like to break up this piece into two single pieces and cut that number in half. So XB, which is the entire length, would be 4 plus 4 plus 4, and that's 12. So that'd be 12 units long. The other question is, is PR a median, an altitude, or something else? So take a look at that. If it was a median, it would go from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. It doesn't do that, so we know it's not a median. The altitude goes from a vertex perpendicular to the opposite side. So the opposite side actually stops here, but since we extend it out and this is perpendicular, this is indeed an altitude. So that's how I would find that. And then this would be the orthocenter of the uh, triangle if we wanted to find out what the orthocenter was. And there's a couple of examples from this section, section F4.